Alright, so you know how sometimes in DVD there are these so-called fat shaming spots. Essentially these are structures or objects that randomly spawn in a Dead by Daylight map where a survivor can freely go in between them, however due to the difference in killer and survivor hitboxes, with the former being bigger than the latter, killers aren't able to go through them, thus their name fat shaming spots. Now even though these are completely unintentional bugs in the map generation of DVD, there have been some updates in the game's history that have made it borderline unplayable because of glitches like these ones. But did you know that in the early days of Dead by Daylight, fat shaming spots were actually planned to be an intentional part of the game's gameplay? For instance, even though the Rancid Abattoir wasn't available to the public during DVD's beta, it was pretty much completely finished. However, as you can see, there were a couple of holes in some of the railings. And you were actually able to crouch under the fence and through this hole right here, effectively resulting in something like a window that can be vaulted an infinite amount of times. Thankfully though, these types of fat shaming spots were nowhere to be seen when the game was officially released on the 14th of June 2016, and if they were currently present in Dead by Daylight, they would be literal infinite loops as the only killers that would be able to counter them would be Chucky, Victor, and yeah, those are basically it. Moving on, another unimplemented concept from the early days of DVD are Basket Memento Moris. Basically, the developers wanted to make it so that killers could choose whether they wanted to put survivors on the hook or instantly kill them. It was ultimately decided, however, that this gave killers way too much of an advantage, and so the devs reworked it into the current offering system. This was actually directly confirmed by the developers in a live stream from back in 2017. Check it out. He's like, yeah, there's a setting in Unreal, and he just puts, he like checks the box, and Is then that it Mori? explodes. Yeah, that was the first Mori. That was at that time you could Mori anytime. There yeah, that's no the thing. There was no people. offering and it was just <laughs> and everybody was just like, well, yeah, I'll kill them all. Of course I'll kill them all. Fun fact, this idea of Basket Mori's kind of returned with the finisher Mori update. However, that one was never introduced since it received a lot of backlash from the community and for good reason. Another unimplemented idea from DBD's past is the so-called early game collapse, or sometimes referred to as the trial warm-up. One of the people that originally proposed this idea was Scott Junt. He suggested that in order to minimize the negative effects of big maps on the killer's early game, and in order to give setup killers like Trapper and the Hack a little bit more time to get going, a new trial warm-up mechanic should be introduced. This happened during early 2020, so that is a little bit less than a year after the endgame collapse was added. The concept for the early game collapse was for it to simply slow down the early game just a little bit. Scott's idea of the trial warm-up mechanic was that basically, at the start of the match, Ominous music would play and the overall lighting would be a kind of dark red. During this phase, all generator repair speeds are reduced by minus 50%. The early game warm-up would end either when 1. The killer entered a chase with a survivor, 2. A survivor took damage, or alternatively 3. When a killer got within 4 meters of a survivor. This, in my opinion, is a pretty well thought out idea, and would up to a certain extent solve the problem of slow early games or maps just being too big. And the developers actually went as far as to consider this mechanic and develop some early prototypes of it. However, ultimately they decided not to implement it, as according to them they had playtested it and concluded that it wasn't fun or engaging for neither the killers nor the survivor side. Though I still think that it would be a cool mechanic nonetheless. Moving on, yet another unused concept are loadout categories. Basically, listed within the game files are graphics for what's known internally as loadout categories. There is one set of these that consists of 14 different icons, which would have likely been used in order to categorize perks. They include adaptation, chasing, concealment, cruelty, enhancement, hindrance, navigation, obstruction, perception, safeguard, strategy, support, tracking and trickery. There is also another set consisting of 8 icons, which would have likely been used for the categorization of offerings, including bonus blood points, luck, map modifications, memento mores, realms, shrouds, awards and XP. As for the last one, it is important to note that an icon for XP offerings exists, despite the fact that XP offerings only exist in the mobile version of Dead by Daylight. Still, it is honestly kind of cool to see that there would have originally been a way for perks and offerings to be categorized, and it makes me wonder what discouraged the developers from adding that. 
Moving on to the next part of the video, we are now going to take a look at some very early concepts for loud noise notifications. As we can see from the official DVD art book, there were quite a few different iterations of loud noises that were originally being developed. The ones on the left side of the page vaguely resemble the loud noise notifications that we currently have in the game. However, the ones on the right look absolutely nothing like what we have today, especially the one in the middle which has this sort of glitchy effect. Furthermore, except for loud noises, it looks as if the entity would have played a much bigger role overall in the trials, with it appearing much more frequently than just during hook stages. For example, it seems as if though it would have been able to materialize itself around trees and other kinds of things like that. Regardless, a lot of these ideas regarding the entity, including the in-game entity whispers that we discussed in my original video, were ultimately discarded, as they would have probably been too ambitious of a project for the developers. Also, could someone tell me what these fire things represent? They're labeled as asymmetry in the art book, and I have absolutely no clue what they would have been used for. Perhaps they would have been some kind of currency? I don't really know, this is all just speculation on my part. Let me know what you think about all of these down in the comments as I would love to know. Yet another unimplemented concept from DVD's history is a killer known as the streamer. A couple of days ago, secret chase music layers were leaked for a killer that vaguely resembles the popular streamer Otsdarva. Take a listen. Furthermore, a unique in-game model for this supposed killer was also found in the in-game files. A user in the comments also leaked the killer's power as well as their perks. I would encourage you to pause the video if you would like to read all of these, or alternatively click the link in the description to check out the original video of the leaked chase music. However, unfortunately, in an old developer livestream from back in 2016, the developers said that they won't be implementing this killer due to licensing issues. Well, I guess that was it. These were another 5 unimplemented concepts from DBD's history. The reason I made this video was that about a month ago I uploaded another video showcasing unused ideas from the game's past. However, there were a couple of ones that I didn't go over in that one, which is why I decided to make sort of a part 2 I guess you can say. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that you learned something new from it. If you did, then make sure to let me know by leaving a like down below, and also I would be glad if you considered subscribing as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!